become familiar with what you have to do. But this topic is the theory of simple bending. So our formula from a few weeks ago, M over I equals stress over Y. If you're in doubt of which formula to use, you know, you can just write out all of the formulas that are <laughs> in the handout and, and see which ones you've got um, information for. So this M, that's the moment of resistance of this beam. <coughs> but what we'll do, we'll work out what the moment is, the maximum moment, and we'll, put, we'll make the maximum moment equal the moment of resistance. Our I value, so we're going to have to work out the second moment of area for a T shape. In order to work out the second moment of area, we need to try and work out what the centre of gravity is, so the location of the, the neutral axis. We have to find out what... Um, we have to, well, overall we've got to find out what the stress is. And then Y, whenever it's a, if, if it was a square, Y is always sort of the D over 2. But when you have a T shape, you've got your distance Y up to the, 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 the part that's in compression. And then you've got the distance Y down to the part that's in tension. And whenever you're trying to work out the, the maximum stress, it's always going to fail wherever your, your Y is the largest. So whichever of this YC or YT is the largest, that's the value that you'll be putting within there. So we'll, we'll find this Y and I value first. Take moments around the bottom. And from the your handout, you can you can pick off the formula for a second moment of area. Which is the total area times by y bar equals the sum of the y bar times by the, the individual area components. So if you were to work out this, we'll class this as a um, sort of this <coughs> bottom part, we'll call that one. And we'll call the top part two. So again, we'll take moments around the bottom. So we'll have this distance, 200, times by the area of 400 by 40. And then we'll be adding the, the area, 200 by 50, times by the distance. It would be 425 to that point there. So considering the, the bottom of the T first, so it's the area is 400 times by 40, and its neutral axis is 200 up, so it's halfway. And its area is 400 times by 40, and then we add the top part, so it's 200 times by 50. <coughs> And the distance to its, the position of its neutral axis halfway is 425. So that's the distance from there all the way to there, 425. Divided by the area. This, so this Y bar, now because we take moments around the, the bottom, it's the distance, this YT, so this Y bar <coughs> T, so it's, it's the Y from the bottom, 
comes to 286.5 millimetres. That's the position of the neutral axis. 286.5. If you take away 450, we get 163.5. That's the distance from the neutral axis to the top. So again, when you're working some, for something like this, trying to work out the maximum stress, <coughs> when the load has been applied at the top, the stress will be greater the, the further away you move from the neutral axis. And the furthest point away is 286.5. Now that we know the position of the neutral axis, you'd have to find your second moment of area. Rather than going through this, off the top of my head, it would be 5.27 times 10 to the eight millimeters to the four. So work that out. In your own time just to test your ability to work out the second moment of area for that T-beam. So you have to use the parallel axis theorem. So you've got like your B, BD cubed over 12 times by the area times by that distance there, plus the B D cubed of this one multiplied by the distance times by the, air, the area. Well, it's the distance squared. But you can find out what I is. So we have Y, we have I. We're trying to find out what this stress is. Now we need to look at the the, the internal moment. So in terms of our moment, I'll just draw out this beam again. You'd have to work out what the reactions are. You find out the reaction on this side is 66.7 and the reaction on this side is 93.3. So in your own time again, find reactions. Then you'd have to draw the, the shear force diagram. That's in order to find out the position of zero shear so to draw the shear force diagram we'd be going up 66.7 then we'll be dropping down 20 every meter down until we reach this point 40 <coughs> then we'll drop down 40 <coughs> and we'll continue down and then we go up 93.3 so you should end up with a, a shear force diagram looking like this. That drops down to 33.3 and that's 70 plus 40, 73.3. <coughs> to find out the, the location of the maximum bending moment so it it's gonna the shape itself it's gonna bend it's gonna bend like this we know that this is going to be the position of the maximum bending moment so we will have to try and find out that location where our shear equals zero called that X 
if you write a little formula of 67 up minus 20 times by x will give us our x value. So our x is 3.33 meters. So if we were to take moments at x to try and find out the max, <coughs> the maximum moment. So mx, we've got this distance times by, actually not, yeah. If we uh, do it that way. So at x, so it would be 3.33 times by the, the reaction, and then you've got minus 3.33 times by the UDL. So if I write out that, that formula, the reaction at the left-hand side, that's 66.7 times by 3.33 minus 2x squared over 2 that's the um, so that's the point load and that's the UDL That RL is um, 66.7, so we end up with 222, take away 111, which just ends up with 111 kilonewton meters, or 111 times 10 to the 6 newton millimeters. Back to our formula at the very top. If we rearrange it, we got our stress is MY over I. If we allow this applied moment to equal the moment of resistance, so if we put in our, in our moment 111 times 10 to the 6 times by the Y value, the largest one it was 286.5 millimetres. And our I value, we worked out, no, it didn't work out. I told you it's 5.27 .7 times 10 to the 8. And I haven't got my calculator. Who can give me an answer? That will be in newtons per millimetre squared. Sixty? Six zero? Point three four. Sixty point three four. Anyone else get that? Yeah. Cool. We'll take that as a yes then. Once you know the stress of the material, the maximum stress, then you can choose a material that has that stress capability. Like steel has like 205, or structural steel is 255, so steel is too large um, for that. Like you could start off with, with a value of um, 255, but if you knew that you were gonna use steel and you could work all the way back and find out your I value, that's another, another thing that you could have done. So in summary, all we've done there is that we've added a T-beam that's been loaded like so. We've used our simply supported uh, theory of simple bend bending formula. And we've tried to fill in these gaps. So to work out I, we needed our second moment of area. So we worked out that. That's a little bit of a revision. In your own time, you figure out how to work out to the I value 
using the parallel axis theorem. So work out that. We, um, and then our M, moment of resistance. We, we worked out our maximum moment. So that's a bit of a revision for beams. And then rearrange all that, we can find out what the stress is.